Great job, worship team, and uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Man, it's so fun to be here on Christmas, and what better way to spend Christmas uh, than worshiping Jesus, uh, the Christ child, our Savior, and gathering together as a church family, with your church family for Christmas. How great is that? Uh, we are thrilled to be here this morning, hope you are too, and hope your uh, Christmas celebrations are not done uh, but uh, they continue, and uh, you have a lot of joy with, uh, with family and friends uh, all the way into the new year. If you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, and this morning we have one verse. And all God's people were like, oh, one verse! Oh my goodness, that's crazy, right? But of course, it's Christmas. In fact, I'm going to read a few verses just to set the scene a little bit. Uh, the title of today's message is Glory and Peace. Glory and Peace. And peace. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 2 says this In those days, a decree went out from the Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, sorry, I lost my place. Are you still there? Where are we? Verse 10, there we go. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, and suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Glory and peace. And today we're looking at that uh, verse, that final verse, verse 14, of the angelic host. I mean, we have been hearing about angels and watching angels and singing angels and watching and hearing the angelic host of our mini uh, choir this morning. What a blessing it is to hear from angels and to hear of their great pronouncement. And can you imagine just this suddenly, this heavenly host appearing, the skies burst forth and just this angelic choir filling the, uh, the arena and, and, and all of the shepherds beholding and just getting blasted with, uh, with the greatest ever uh, Messiah chorus you could ever imagine. Glory to God in the highest, they said, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. And today I want to focus on two points uh, from that verse. And num point number one is this, glory to the highest one. Glory to the highest one. As the angel said, glory to God in the highest. And when they're talking about in ha the highest, they are talking about status. And they're speaking of position. Let God be glorified, they're crying out. And calling out to the shepherds, calling out to the earth, saying, God needs to be glorified. Give him your highest praise, your highest glory. He is deserving of it. Because he is higher than every heavenly being and any heavenly being you would ever encounter or ever imagine. And he is higher than every single earthly ruler along the earth. And in Christ's day, when Jesus was born, there were many that were exalted, many popular figures, uh, many famous ones with many followers. There was Herod, the king of Judea. There was Quirinius, of whom we heard, the governor of Syria. There was Augustus, the Caesar of the Roman Empire, which, uh, which, uh, uh, whose shadow fell upon every part of Israel and the known world. Glory to, to the highest one, and, and Christ is exalted uh, over them. 
But Christ is also exalted over everyone who would be exalted in our day. I mean, think of the people who are exalted in our day. I mean, we have like, we have presidents, right, or performers, or military members, or moms, right? I mean, these are the exalted ones in our midst, right? And they deserve honor, right, for who they are, for what they've accomplished. But friends, no one deserves greater honor than God, the one who sent his only son so that we could be saved. All, uh, all deserve honor, but only God deserves the greatest glory. Let me ask you this this morning. Does the highest one receive your highest praise? With your life, with your lips, with everything you are, does, does the highest one get your highest glory? I don't know about you, but in our family, um, when we do Christmas, uh, we have to set a budget, right? We have to set a Christmas budget. Anybody got a budget for Christmas? You're like, sort of, right? Well, we set a budget. We have like, all right, there's this budgeted for each kid, and then there's budgeted amounts so we can spend towards each one. And I'll just tell you, every single year, I blow right through that budget when it comes to my wife, right? Because she's my favorite. She's the one I adore. And man, it's just so hard to stay within that budget. I mean, I get to that budget, and I'm like, oh, she's worth more than that. I got to break through every time. Right, And this year I tried to stay within it, but every single time, have to, why? Because she is my favorite, right? And don't we give our highest adoration, our highest affection to those that are so special and precious to us? And I'll tell you, while that may be what, what, what my wife gets when it comes to the Lord, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the God who has rescued my soul, he gets way more, and, and, and my wife doesn't even compare with him. He gets my affection. He gets my adoration. He gets my praise. He gets my life. He gets my all because of what he's given for us, for coming for us, for dying for us, for raising again, and for saving us. Does the highest one receive your highest praise? Could you say that in your heart? Friends, he's so deserving. Would you say with the angels, would you join with them this morning and give glory to the highest one in your life? With the way you live, the things you set your mind to and set your hand to, the way uh, you uh, raise your family or guide your family, the way you influence the people at work, let God be the highest one. Let him get your highest praise in everything. Glory to the highest one. Our second point this morning is this, peace for the favored ones peace for the favored ones and that's what we hear the angels singing as well they say this glory to god in the highest and then they say and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased i think the uh, new international version is preferred here in terms of its translation when it says peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests uh, peace to those on whom his favored rests that's peace for the favored ones. Glory to the highest one and peace for the favored ones. And what a, what a great and glorious announcement that these angels had. The ability to come and say, not only does God deserve all praise, but they're also saying, hey, the greatest gift that has ever come is now here. On this birthday of the Savior, his entry into this world when God came to earth and took on flesh and, be, and dwelt in our midst. And him going and living the life God required and going to the cross and dying on the cross on our behalf. Man, they could proclaim with great joy that morning, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. Peace on earth. And in Jesus' day, peace was already being celebrated. You have to understand that. Peace was already being celebrated. In fact, Caesar Augustus was a rock star back in those days. I mean, he was not only the emperor of the Roman, uh, Roman uh, Empire, but he was also uh, the one who was noted for and known for developing and cultivating and beginning the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. And they had started to enjoy and started to embrace and legislate this peace throughout the empire. And it became well known and people were celebrating this going, we're not at war. We are experiencing great peace, great prosperity and great blessing because of this emperor king. And so they were loving and adoring Augustus. And so in the midst of this, the angels come down. They 
come and fill the skies. And they are bursting forth with joy to say, hey, there is a greater joy. There is a greater joy because one who is greater than Augustus, he might have brought the Pax Romana, but Jesus comes bringing the Pax Mundi, or the peace of the world, or peace for the world. Jesus is peace for us. Is he peace for you today? That peace was celebrated by angels. Who doesn't want peace, right? Who doesn't want peace in their lives? Some of you are here today and you're like, gosh, man, I would really love that. I really need that peace. I mean, I I need it amidst all the holiday traffic, amidst the craziness and the chaos of the Christmas celebrations with family members and kids going wild and crazy, uh, amidst all the programs and, and the Christmas parties and everything in the presents and the hoopla, you're like, gosh, if there's peace on earth, where is it, right? Where is it? And you want it and you long for it and, and, and you try, I'll tell you friends, you can't find it outside. We could try to bring peace outside the world. And and, and even if we got peace ordered on the outside and we could control everything in our lives to make a peaceful and tranquil environment, guess what? We still wouldn't have peace because there's the inner peace that is so desperately needed, right? And sometimes that seems so much more difficult because you feel the turmoil. You feel the loneliness and that emptiness. You feel that sense of going, man, I am longing for something more. And dear friends, I would tell you today that when the angels proclaimed peace upon earth to those on whom his favor rests, they were proclaiming a peace that would come, that was greater, that would be not only for the outside world, but also uh, for the inside as well. Peace for the favored ones. Do you need that peace today? Do you long for that peace today? The Bible talks about two different types of peace, mainly two different types of peace if you were to search all the scriptures. And I'm going to tell you, here's good news. It is available today. It is available to everyone who wants that peace today. It is available to you. The first type of peace is peace with God. Peace with God. And the reality is, is there is no peace with God because of sin that has entered the life, uh, our lives and this world Peace with God. Think about it this way. How do I find peace with God? Well, number one, uh, it started by living in a right direction. Right direction. When God created the world, guess what? He created the world a certain way to be a certain way, and he gave commands to say, hey, live in this certain way and to follow these ways. And if we followed those ways, we were living in peace with God, right? But anybody who's gone the wrong way or gone the wrong direction in their lives, knows how quickly that peace, uh, peace goes away. I was uh, living in, in uh, Chicago for a year, um, back in my, uh, in my late teens, right? And I'm uh, going to Bible college in the city, living there for a year. And if you've driven in the city, um, you realize pretty quickly um, that uh, there are one-way streets, right? And they seem to be all over the place. Well, I remember as a, uh, as a, you know, a, a teenager who's down, you know, going for my freshman year and driving down to the city, all of a sudden I turn down a road and I think I'm going the right way. And as I'm going, all of a sudden I see all the lanes of traffic are coming right at me. That moment I was flooded with zero peace and all fear and I, w- I wasn't sure what to do. And so I'm sitting here trying to go, I need to turn around, but there's no space and there's cars lined up parked on either side and these lanes, all three of them are coming right at me and they're not stopping. And I'm just like, ah, what? Do I turn? No, uh, you know, and all of a sudden, all three lanes come right up and they go, Hurr! anybody ever experienced that or am I just the only one? Yeah, right? I'm the only one who missed the sign and and was down the wrong. I mean, when you are going the wrong direction, there is no peace, right? There is no peace whatsoever. And friends, I'll tell you, that's what it is when we live against the ways of God. When we go against the ways of God and we don't follow his directions for this life. Did you know that God was the one who created all that we see? Everything that exists is because of his hand and his handiwork. 
And if he's the creator, that means he knows exactly how it should work. And when we go a different way or we try to tell God, no, I don't like that way. I think it should be different. And we try to define reality according to our own plans and our own purposes. We lose that peace with God because the Bible calls that sin. Right? Some of you know that. Some of you experience that. In fact, not just some, all of us have experienced that. In fact, Romans chapter 3 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all fallen short of his perfect righteousness and his holy standard, right? And we've all fallen short of it. We've all gone the wrong way and experienced losing that peace. But it's in fact not just a, a... getting a right direction that keeps that peace or or gives that peace, but it's also a right relationship or peace with God. You see, when we sin, when we go the wrong direction, we break that relationship with God. We broke that relationship, and we didn't know that relationship, and the only way that relationship could get saved was for Jesus to be born on Christmas Day. For Jesus to come to earth as a human and and dwell in our midst, live uh, uh, the life that we should have lived, live in perfectly right direction with the Lord, and then to go to the cross and to take on all of our wrong direction choices that we've made, all of that sin on himself, and to pay for that at the cross, to be buried and then rise again victoriously on the third day to give us life. That's the blessing of the gospel. And friends, to have peace with God, we need what Jesus brought starting on Christmas Day. You need that today. And do you have that? Some of you here today, you don't know that peace. You don't experience that peace in your heart because you haven't embraced Jesus Christ. And that emptiness or that loneliness or that rage that won't go away That longing that's inside will never get filled, will never be satiated until you come and surrender to the the manger. And you say, thank you, Christ child, for coming for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I desperately need you today. And I need that peace in my heart. When the angels declared peace on earth with those whom his favor rests, He was saying, yeah, peace is available because Jesus is here. And what he's going to do at the cross is available for you today. And it can bring you back into a right relationship. It can start you back on that right direction in following him again. So peace with God is what we need. Peace for the favored ones. But we also need the second type of peace, peace from God, right? Peace from God. Because some of us are followers of Jesus. Some of us have made that decision. And we're like, I know peace with God. I, I, I trusted in Jesus. And I remember that time when I, when I gave my life to him and I began to follow him. I, I stopped trying to save myself or do, good, do enough good things to overcome my bad. But I, ra- re- I just recognized my sin, threw myself at the cross, and I'm like, Jesus, I need you. I trust you today and I'm going to follow you as best as I can. But wait a minute, I still don't always seem to be very peaceful. Anybody feel that? The stress that is just, uh, just you know, carrying on your shoulders or, or, the, uh, or the sorrow that you're, you're, you're bearing today and it's just overwhelming you or the anger that rages within you or, or that anxiety that's, uh, that is just pervasive. And you're like, what do I do? When, I, when, when my peace is gone, when the shalom of God is no longer with me. We need that peace that comes from God. That peace that comes from God. Do you need that peace from God today? Some of you do. Some of you are like, Christmas is coming. And all the family. And then the anxiety is coming. You're like, I don't know what to do. And, and, and it's built. You need peace from God, right? Or I'm going to kill my kid, Right? They did it again, and I told them not to. I'm going to, right? I need peace. We need peace from God. So what do we do? I love what it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Friends, that's what we need. When the shalom is gone, the peace that God wants his children to live with, when that is gone and it's replaced with the anxiety or the shame or the the fear or, or the anger, whatever it is, come to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus and give it to him. Do you know that you're not strong enough to carry those things? Sometimes we, we try, right? We muscle up or, or we try to medicate it and cover it. And we're like, I, I, I'm just going gonna, gonna to use this substance of some sort just to like, my, I, I got to get more caffeine or I got to get more alcohol or I got to get more drugs. I got to get more whatever. And we're trying to do what we can to cover it up. Friends, what we desperately need is to recognize I can't hold this. That's my body crying out, my heart crying out, going like, man, you need Christ. You need the Lord, and you need his peace. You need that peace from God today. So give it to him. Father, I can't control my spouse, but I've been trying to. And I'm so deeply hurt. I just want to give that over to you today. I want to put him in your hands. I want to put her in in your hands will you give me again your peace in its place father I can't control what's happening in our world in our government in, in our in our communities or in our schools and it's overwhelming me and, and, and I'm fearful I'm angry I'm, I'm frustrated I don't know what to do give it to God God I give it to you today Thank you that you are the highest one. I'm going to praise you today because I can't carry this. And, and, and we don't have it. And so we, I'm just going to trust you again today. Oh God, I'm carrying some deep shame over the things that have been in my life. Some of those things that I did that I don't think anybody can forgive me for. I'm bringing that to you today. I'm bringing that shame to you. My anxieties, my fears, and I'm just laying it at your feet. I can't change this. I can't fix this. But I give it to you. Fill me with your peace today. I need the peace that is from God. Do you need that today? It's available to you. Peace for the favored ones. I know what you're saying. Well, how do I know if I'm a favored one, right? The Bible typically talks about the elect. How do I know that I'm one on whom his favor rests? Some of you are like, I feel like God's favor isn't resting on me. Do you know how you know? By putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins and to begin to follow him today. Would you do that? What better day to start following Jesus than on Christmas morning? Let's take a moment and pray about that.